Welcome. I was so delighted to be with you in the Lord's Word, in His Word. Greetings, this is our Dolores Johnson Spears, pastor of Kingdom Church House of Prayer. You tonight, I'm just going to lift up a prayer. May the Lord bless and keep us. May He cause His face to shine upon us. May He lift up His countenance unto us and grant us His peace in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning. Welcome to Fresh Word. We're so delighted to have you with us. We'll be sharing from the book of Zechariah, a very powerful uh, story, a, a very powerful account, the fourth chapter of Zechariah. And it's going to bless you. It is the word of the Lord. And he wants us to know it is so the word of the Lord. This is the Old Testament, of course. and uh, But the same point is brought out in the New because God is the same yesterday today and forevermore and remember jesus christ came to fulfill the law fulfill the law he didn't come to say get rid of all of it he came to fulfill the law so this is a rich word even for the new testament christian i want to say that uh there was a particular leader named Z zerubbabel and his assignment he was over the building project and he was a leader uh, when the uh, Jews were coming back to to rebuild the temple and all of that, and the people got sluggish. The people got to a point where they would not help him, and he's sort of scratching his head, and he's trying to figure out what's going on. Zechariah is the prophet of the day, and he hears from the Lord on behalf of Zerubbabel, who's trying to do it right, who who knows who God is, and but he's trying to understand why the people are not doing their jobs uh, uh, just symbolically. It's as if he gave them assignments to do, to perhaps lay the floor for the temple or whatever, but people were sluggish, and they were just not doing what they were supposed to do. So Zechariah gets, uh, receives of the Lord. He has a word from the Lord for Zerubbabel to encourage him. That is just like God. When we get to the point where we think we have help from people, sometimes God will assign you people to help you, to encourage you. And then when they pull back, you literally say, Lord, what am I going to do? But God has the answer. And he doesn't have to come from one place all the time. He'll raise up somebody else. So uh, we want you to be encouraged and, and, and listen to these details. I believe it's going to bring you so much hope and encouragement. We're going to read from Zechariah 4, uh, the first verse to the third verse, and then we'll tell the balance of uh, the rest of it. Please promise me that you will read the entire chapter uh, 4 of the book of Zechariah. And uh, we're reading now, like I said, Zechariah chapter 4, starting with verse 1, and we'll read to uh, verse 3. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereupon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. An angel comes to Zechariah to give him, to uh, help him understand this vision uh, God will sometimes give you a vision. He'll give you a dream to help you understand what's going on, to give you a remedy, to give you the answer to prayer many times. How many times have we read that God sent an angel on Wednesday night? We studied Cornelius in chapter uh, 10 in the book of Acts. And God uh, sent an angel to Cornelius because Cornelius was known in heaven. God uses has his angelic messengers whenever he wants to. Perhaps you have entertained an angel unaware. But at this particular time, Zechariah's calling is, is, is prophetic. 
and he he's the prophet in that area as the temple is being rebuilt Zerubbabel needs some help uh, he just needs some help physically materially the people are pulling back they're getting slack and he's saying literally uh, how am I going to build this temple how many of you have been in that place I have where God has given you an assignment and there were others that were supposed to come and help and God is saying you don't have to pull back because they are pulling back I want you to trust in me I want you to depend on me yes we will use physical hands but God uh, sometimes does not even use physical hands he's God he can supernaturally do whatever he wants to do um, he's going to use physical hands here but the motivation uh, many times we have to pray and leave it in the hands of God when we're dealing with our family when we're dealing with people that we're working with and God has given an assignment and they're supposed to be a part of it you told them that and then they begin to back up and they begin to get sluggish and God says give it to me commit it unto me stop trying to do it yourself it has to be done by the Spirit of God we're going to read that scripture in a few minutes that we quote all the time not by might not by power that that scripture is in Zechariah the fourth chapter uh, Zerubbabel needed to hear that so Zechariah said I've got to get this word to him and the angel let him know this is a word for Jeru Zerubbabel uh, he needs encouragement and so what uh, the vision that Zechariah saw was the oil um, coming to fill uh, the lamp stand and all of the sim symbolism of lamps being filled and pipes coming from the olive tree there were two olive trees one on both sides and I thought about uh, how oil is used uh, to symbolize the Holy Spirit how water sometimes is used to symbolize the Holy Spirit and so in this case it is uh, being used by oil and literally Zechariah is saying it takes the Spirit of God yes you're building a physical building yes you are building um, a program yes God has given you an idea for your church he's given you an idea for your family for your community but it's got to be spiritually built first many times you got to lay that foundation in the spirit what does that mean you got to pray about it you, you, you know you just jump into the physical anything can happen we got it even when you know God said to do it sometimes God says okay now pray about it first so we can have that spiritual foundation so that you can have the help that you need so that I can put it into the mind of the people you're speaking it is good your design is good you've drawn out you know you're in architecture and uh, uh, and you've drawn out the plan and yet the people are sluggish they need the Spirit of God you need to go to God and just pray and ask God to lay that foundation in their hearts so they won't draw back from their responsibility and this is what is happening in this chapter the people were sluggish so Zechariah is saying this vision that the angel has, has shown me and explained to me Zerubbabel is literally saying get full of the Spirit of God stay full of the Spirit of God that's the word for us today in 2022 there's so many uh, plans that need to be built there's so many designs that God wants to come up in this world and he's assigned them to different ministers he's assigned them to different lay lay people and he's saying it has to be done by the Spirit of God don't just get out there and get busy you know uh, it's okay to be zealous but you have to have the foundation laid by the Spirit of God again what does that mean it may me God may tell you I want you to pray about this for three days I want you to fast before you put one piece of lumber uh, in the in the ground or, 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 or lay a foundation before you pour the cement for the foundation I want you to pray 
and I want you to fast. That's laying a spiritual foundation. Don't forget, in the dream, Zechariah actually saw, in the vision, he saw two olive trees representing the oil that continuously flow when we involve the Holy Spirit, when we ask the Holy Spirit to help us lay a foundation. You want to pray, you want to study the Word. He may give you a word to the, the the word of God to begin to speak every day. The people will hear my voice and they'll obey. Uh, God, I ask you to put it in their hearts to want to follow the leader that you put uh, before them. God, help them to respect what comes out of my mouth. As you give it to me, then I'm going to give it to them. Help them to respect it. Tie our hearts together. Help them to honor the gift that you have given me to lead them. There may be some prayers that God wants you to pray first. That's what this this is symbolizing. Remember the oil is continuously pouring from the trees going into the lampstand and, and it ends up, uh, it may be a light. Oil is used for a lot of things. We know it represents the Holy Spirit here. But in, in, in the natural, oil can use, be used to, to warm up uh, uh, something. Oil can be used so we can actually see. Put it in a lamp and we can actually see. Uh, oil lubricates. When you try to put two things together, many times, especially metals, sometimes they have to be polished down. Sometimes they, oil has to be there. The running of a car, many times... Uh, uh, it, it's not going to run properly unless that oil is there. Um, oil is used for so many things. Uh, oil can be used even to cause the body, certain parts of the body, to be tender and, 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 and pliable and, and uh, soft. Uh, ladies know about that. But oil can be used for so many things. And so the Holy Spirit, oil represents the Holy Spirit. Now let me show you the main scripture that we uh, recite all the time, verse 6. Now we're still talking about Zacharias that tries to, he's trying to encourage Rerubable because the people literally have put their, put their materials down that they use for building and they're pulling back. Okay, and, and God sends a word and say. Uh, it is not by might, it's not by power. You need the spirit of the living God. You need that oil. You need to stay full of the oil. And if you pray, the people will receive what the Holy Spirit is saying. When you're full of the oil, you know, the people can respond to your word because your word may sound like thunder. Your word may sound like, the, uh, you know, that the word is coming from heaven. People know sometimes when they hear in it's God, it may come from a donkey, it may come from a, a child, but when they hear it, God has a way of getting into the hearts of the people. When you receive the Holy Spirit to fulfill that ministry and that calling, you stop trying to do it yourself. Literally, Zechariah is letting Zerubbabel know nothing will be built if you try to do it yourself. It's just not going to happen. The people are not going to yield to the Spirit of God. You've got to move by the Spirit of God. You've got to stay full of this oil, the olive tree, continuously pouring oil because you take the time to be in the presence of God, the oil giver, the Holy Spirit giver. And as you get full of that oil, then you're going to infect. You're going to affect those people around you. You're going to infuse those people around you with the Spirit of God in a very positive way. But I dare you to try to do it by yourself, thinking that you've got all this influence. is not going to happen. Let's look at verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Now this is the angel telling Zechariah, You need to tell Zerubbabel. It is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Okay, I don't care how much a might you think you have. And some of us that are physically strong, we have physical abilities. You know, God has given some people just good, you know, strong memory 
uh, systems and, and they can remember anything and uh, so many things and they, you know, are organized and they are gifted and, and they've recognized it from uh, uh, being a little child and they've heard, oh, you're so smart, you can do this, you can do that, you're talented. God gives gifts. He gives talents. But I'm telling you what, you'll go much further if the Spirit of God is a part of that process. If you allow the Spirit of God, the oil of God, to keep you in tune with His Word, if you allow God by the Holy Ghost to just continue to influence you and uh, uh, build upon the words that God has given you. You know, when you read an instruction in a manual, you know, and you're just smart like that, and you put things together, uh, and you're just trying to read a manual because you're trying to fix something, a table, something simple that you're putting together, because of your experience, and you've used your hands to do that, you kind of know what to do. But I tell you, when you spend time with God and do that same assignment, it's going to be easier. It's just going to be easier, because you've allowed God to be God. And you're inviting the Holy Spirit to come and uh, be a part of everything you set your hands to do. You'd be amazed. There are a lot of testimonies out there where things didn't fit in the physical. Material things, trying to build something physical. You know, the lumber, I cut it just what, you know, the size that I was supposed to cut it. And I was supposed to put a piece of steel in here to re-fortify it did not flow. It didn't do what it was supposed to do. But I dare you to ask God. I ask. I dare you to honor God in the process. I dare you to take a minute, pause, and begin to say, God, I did exactly what the instructions told me to do, and this is something you told me to do. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to show me how to put this together. Testimony after testimony. Allow God to be first. Allow Him to... Uh, uh, send his precious Holy Spirit with these special assignments that you have. Stop trying to do it on your own. Uh, uh, your physical might is not enough. Uh, your combination of leadership skills and certain people that have certain talents, not enough if God is not a part of it, if God is not leading it, not by power. And it's talking about that physical power, your personal strength, whether it's intellectual or it's physical, is not enough. Although God gave you the talent, He wants to lead it. He wants to lead the process. He wants to help you build. He, you know, is the best one. He knows exactly what to do. He knows what it's supposed to look like more than you do. I don't care what your talent is. And so as Zechariah is telling Zerubbabel, stop trying to do it by yourself. You're going to continue to be frustrated. You can't look to the people. You've got to look to God. And when you look to God, he puts it in them. Or he may have to go get another set of people, whatever it takes. God will get the job done. And that's the word that he's sending to this leader who wants to do good. But he was looking to the people and as he got frustrated, here comes the prophet of God. Be encouraged. All you got to do is allow the Holy Spirit to lead. All you got to do is to allow the Holy Spirit to be in charge. You're just not smart enough. I don't, I don't care how smart we are. The Holy Spirit knows everything. We don't know everything, but the Holy Spirit knows all things. All right, let's look at that last part. It's not by might or by power, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts. And I love the fact that he said the Lord of hosts because Jehovah Sabaoth is the Lord of hosts, which means that that host would be angels. One is already there telling Zechariah, but the Lord of hosts is able to bring angel after angel after angel. Uh, there may have been angels helping them build the, the temple after uh, Zerubbabel yielded to the Spirit of God. There may have been angels coming to actually help him uh, with the people that begin to cooperate with him. Uh, verse 7 says, Who art thou, O great mountain? This is so powerful. This is for you. 
This is for me. God wants you to be encouraged in 20 and 22. Things are looking dark. There are some things that have not happened the way you thought that they were going to happen. There are some assignments that God has put in your hand and you want to get it done. And yet uh, uh, there's a sluggard spirit and, you know, things are being held up, be encouraged. It says, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Listen to God. Receive this as your word. It may look like a mountain. The problem may look like a mountain. The problem may look impossible. Uh, uh, you may uh, say, I can't get over that mountain. I can't get over that hurdle. The problem is too big. I tried. Uh, everybody turned on me. But God says he's going to clear it out. That mountain is going to become a plain. That mountain is, become, is going to become flat. No, you can't pull the mountain down. You can't even climb this one. But with God, God says, I'll make it plain. I'll make it flat. Uh, uh, that mountain is going to have to be cast into the sea if we yield to the Spirit of God. And then he says, it sounds so New Testament he says, and speak grace, grace, grace to it. Oh, by the grace of God. What will we do without the grace of God? Stop trying to do it yourself. You're not strong enough. He bought you with a price. He expects you to lean on him. He expects you to lean on him. God expects you to lean on him. That's when you'll be able to get a lot done. When every morning you say, God, I commit this to you. I'm headed to work. I got an eight to five. God, I commit my day to you. I commit every assignment to you. Some of the assignments look like they're too much. They're mountainous. Uh, uh, they are just impossible. They've given me a, a job that's almost impossible. It's hard for me to accomplish everything that I'm supposed to accomplish uh, uh, by five o'clock. But God is saying, if he puts you on that job, if this is his perfect will, he's going to help you climb those mountains those mountains will not be impossible to climb and in the in, in some cases he's going to flatten the mountain the mountain will have to bow the mountain will have to melt like wax at the presence of the lord i believe that's psalm 97 at the presence of the lord the mountain will have to melt like wax when you allow the holy spirit be encouraged you can't do it on your own. People are going to fail you. But Almighty God, the Holy Spirit, keep uh, taking the oil. Keep allowing the oil to fill you up. Let's look at the New Testament. Look at what Philip accomplished uh, in, in the book of Acts. Just a great man of God, a deacon. He was not an apostle. He was a deacon, but he was full of the Holy Ghost. He was full of the oil of the Lord. He allowed the olive tree to pour into him continuously. In the vision, Zechariah saw a continuous flowing of the oil. So uh, Philip allowed the oil to fill him up. And we saw Philip uh, uh, running to a chariot, talking to an Ethiopian, leading the Ethiopian to Jesus Christ. We saw Philip disappears like God put him in another city. Uh, so much can be accomplished when we allow God to fill us with the Holy Spirit and we keep God first and we stop trying to do it by our ability. It's not going to happen that way. That's a way to fail. You know, I used to could do, I accomplish some things on my own. I felt, you know, before I got saved. I accomplished something and God let me know I was with you then you know it was it was my mercy and grace then that you were able to accomplish now let me show you something and sure enough as we begin to pray as we begin to seek God as we begin to allow the Holy Spirit to keep us full so much more was accomplished so much more was accomplished I can't take credit for it I know so many testimonies out there of so many people that accomplished so much because they kept Jesus first in their lives they didn't try to do it on their own and what they did 
with Christ in their life compared to what they did before Christ. Look at Peter uh, before the Holy Spirit. Look at Peter full of fear. But once he received the Holy Spirit, bold, powerful. Remember when he told him, uh, I can't help but preach the word of God. You have to put me back in jail. I cannot help but preach the word of God. That's where it was settled in heaven. So, beloved, be encouraged. Be encouraged today because God has an answer. And it's his spirit, rich, flowing in you. That's going to accomplish everything that you need accomplished. The ministry, the calling, the eight to five job, mothering and fathering children. You can't do it on your own. It can be mountainous, but with God. He, he, he'll speak grace, grace, grace to it. And it'll level off and it'll melt. We thank God for his glory. Let's pray. May the Lord bless and keep us. May he cause his face to shine upon us. May he lift up his countenance unto us and grant us his peace. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen, amen, and amen.